Okay, Judges, chapter 14. And Samson went down to Timnah. Genesis 38, 13. Interesting place. Genesis 38, 13. Because it's a place that happens to be in the line of Jesus Christ, kind of, sort of. Genesis 38, 13. And what happens is Judah here, he gets his boys. Two of them die. One of them's young. He tells the, his daughter-in-law, he says, go home to your father. When my youngest son is grown, then you two can come together and raise up seed. Well, the boy is grown. The daughter-in-law sees that, well, she has not been given to him in marriage. And the woman we're looking at is Tamar. In verse 13, well, verse 12, in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shares in Timnah. Well, there we are. It's the same place, Timnah. He and, a, and his friend Haram, the Dominite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, the father-in-law goes up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And what she does, she takes off her, her, her robe of widowhood, puts on the robe of a harlot, comes in unto Judah, and Judah comes into him, and she becomes pregnant. And in Judah, I mean Judah, in Genesis 38, Verse 29, the very end of the verse, therefore his name is called Perez. That's in the line of Jesus Christ. This place that this woman played the harlot, Judah. And this is the same place that Samson is going down. We are in the land of Israel. We are in the land of Judah. And he saw a woman in Timnah are the daughters of the Philistines. The Philistines are in the land of Judah. The land prescribed by God to give to Israel. They're in the wrong position. Second Chronicles 28, 18. It's quite interesting as a family that we read this today. Second Chronicles 28, 18. Years later, Uh, the date in Judges here is 1161. The date in Second Chronicles is 741. So 400 years, it hasn't changed. In Second Chronicles 28, 18. And the Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah and had taken Beth Shemesh and Agilon and Gedaroth and Shoko with the villages of Antimna. With the village. So here we are. We've pinpointed where we are in Judges 14. Samson, who is of the tribe of Dan up north, has come down to Judah. He has come down to a city where the Philistines are in the land of Israel. Verse 2 of chapter 14. He came in and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines, not Israel. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Look, look how demanding this guy is to his parents. He's ordering his parents. I have stepped out of our tribe, Dan. I have gone into the land of Israel. Okay. Well, the law says you're supposed to prescribe your tribe. But we went down to Judah. Okay, that's okay. Not okay, but... It, and then he goes amongst the Philistines, which is definitely not okay, because God told them not to marry in these tribes. Of other tribes are other strange people. And then he demands his parents, go get her for me. And he doesn't ask his father and mother what is proper. In verse 3, his parents are right by God. 
Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, Jewish people, or even Dan? Again, among all my people, Dan, Israel, the brethren, my people, Dan, Samson, dear, you're, you're stepping out of what God wants us to do. That thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine. Now look at his father and mother. Your brethren, Israel, my people, Dan uncircumcised Philistines Jewish people were circumcised he they have threefold warned Samson you're doing wrong and I would assume that uh, his parents if they had a scroll of the law of Zorah he would have probably opened up that scroll and showed Samson right where the law says what he's telling them he's saying you're getting the wrong way Deuteronomy 7 4. Deuteronomy 7 4. And we'll read verse 2 through 4. Deuteronomy 7 2 through 4. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. As the bad side of the world gets of God. They're sinners. They're wicked sinners. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not go unto his son, and nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son, Samson. For they will turn away thy son from following me, King Solomon, that they may serve other gods, King Solomon, book of Judges. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. I would assume that Moses' parents, if they had that written writing, they would have made him write it 10, 20 times. They're right proper parents. The angel of the Lord showed up to them and they completely obeyed what God told them to do. And Manoah is like, Lord, can you send that angel? Because I want to verify. I want to make sure that I order my family correctly. But his father and mother, verse 4, knew not that it was of the Lord. Oh. So when we read Deuteronomy 2 through 4, Deuteronomy 7 1 did not mention the Philistines. <laughs> Isn't that kind of interesting? Of all the people mentioned in Deuteronomy 7 1, not one of them were the Philistines. So God did not violate his own law. That he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel and in 2 Chronicles 28 that we read. They're way into Judah and they're taking control of Israel, the Philistines. Why? It's sin. In chapter 13 verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines forty years. And this still is seen enemy, he shows up even to King Saul and King David. This is where that, that giant Goliath and his brothers are from. Philistine. No, not from Timna, but the Philistine people. Verse 5. Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother, to Timna. And came to the vineyards of Timnath. So Timnath is a vineyard area. It's also where they were sharing their sheep with Judah. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Number six, verse three and four. Number six, verses three and four. Now remember, he was to be a Nazarite. Number six, 
verses 3 and 4. And it's kind of funny because he's in the vineyards. Well, let's read 6, 3, and 4 in the book of Numbers. And he shall separate himself from wine. What a vineyard. So great. Makes wine. And strong drink. And shall drink no vinegar of wine. Nor vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes. Nor eat moist grapes. Or dry. He's in the area he's not supposed to be as a Nazarite. Now, he can go in vineyards, but he's prying himself. He's in a place that God said, you don't eat, you don't drink those fruit. And all the days of separation shall he eat. Now, it doesn't say touch or go to, but shall eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. Now, remember the trouble with Adam and Eve? They got too close to the tree that they weren't supposed to be at. He's getting too close to an area, you know. And you're going to see with the life of Samson, he toys with sin as if he's a mouse playing with a cat. And evidently, that mouse will get attacked and get killed by the cat. He toys, he riddles, he jokes, he relishes himself in pleasure for she pleases me he said well that's the lust of the flesh the pride of the i mean the lust of the eyes he's already on two forms of sin of satan's toolbox and he will get to the pride of life of who he is and his great strength so the vineyards, verse 5 of Timoth, and behold, a young lion roared against him. He's in the wrong place. And yet the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him, Samson, and he rent him, the lion, as he would have a kid, uh, as he would rent a kid. I don't know who would rip a goat in half, but that's what he did. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother when he, what he had done. But verse 5 says, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to dim them. So evidently they're not together. And we've already read. Now let's see number 6-6. Six, six. This vow of a Nazarite. We read about the vine and drinking of the, the juices and the wines and the liquor and eating of grapes. In verse chapter 6, verse 6 of Numbers. In all the days that he separates himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother if they die. When they die because the consecration of his God is upon his head, he's been defiled by his killing this lion. Leviticus 11.27 Leviticus 11.27 He said, no unclean thing. Leviticus 11, 27. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, cats, dogs, lions, among all manner of beasts that go on all fours, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches their carcass, that's going to come up, shall be unclean unto the even 6 p.m but a dead carcass of a dead lion is unclean he has made himself unclean but let's look at chapter 13 verse 4 now there are missing times in samson's life that we don't know about 
There are missing times in John the Baptist's life we don't know about. There are missing times of David we don't know about. There are missing times of Jesus Christ we don't know about. And as far as this vow of, of Samson, verse 4 of chapter 13, and I therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink no wine nor strong drink. That's the mother. And it would be him, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver. It does not say how long. And he didn't make the vow. But when we go back to Numbers chapter 6, again, a, a vow of Nazarite is not a lifetime vow. And I'm looking for... In chapter 6, verse 13, there it is. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the, car, unto the door of the tabernacle. Now we don't know, when we go back to Judges, God never said how long that consecration was going to be. At this point, Santa meets this lion. He may have been taken to the tabernacle. He may have been brought to, well, it wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, at Jerusalem, Shiloh. He may have been brought to the door and say, listen, this is my son. He's been given by God. He had a vow of. In verse 7, she says to her husband, the child should be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. And the thing, and the thing is that to the day of his death, that is added. That's not said by the angel. She could, I mean, we don't know. We just don't know. But that's not said in verse 5. He said, he shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And then his commission, he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. She adds that part. I don't know why. But in any case, where it lies to be, where we are in, in verses 5, 6, and 7... He has definitely sinned the Old Testament law. He's been defiled by this dead animal, which is the animal itself is unclean. Dogs and kitty cats are unclean in the law. So he told not his mother's father, so they're not there with him. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned. To take her. So he goes back home for a little bit. We don't know how long. And he comes back. And he turned aside to see the carcass. Leviticus 11.27. Of the lion. And behold there was a swarm of bees. And honey. And there's nothing wrong with the honey. But where is the honey? It's in that dead animal. In the carcass of the lion. That honey is unclean. By that dead animal, Leviticus 11.27. That may be the most sweetest, finest, greatest honey that those bees could have ever made, but it's in a dead animal. And Leviticus 11.27 says, no, you can't have it. So what's he do? And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. Now he's definitely defiled. And came to his father and mother, and he gave them. And they did eat. Wow, this is almost like Genesis 3 played out again. And he doesn't tell them, say, here, here's honey from a dead animal. Because he knows that his parents would rebuke him. They already rebuked him about a woman that he chose. He has now made this a corporate sin with his mother and father and himself. He told them not. In verse 6, he told them not. 
that he killed the lion. He told them not where he got the honey because mom and dad would rebuke him. And he did not ever want to be rebuked. He could get me this woman. Well, son, don't you? No, no, just get me that woman. Quiet. I don't want to hear anything else. And yet the Holy Spirit is using him. So his father went down unto the woman. And Samson made there a feast. For so used the young men to do. This is something that they would do. And we have the wedding feast today in America. After the marriage, there's a feast. In the Bible, before the marriage, there's a feast. And uh, let's see, Genesis, oh, when Jacob meets, and he's deceived. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Uh, Abraham, I know it's on the right hand side of my Bible. Back to the pages. Uh, Genesis chapter 29. Yep. Verse 21. Jacob has worked seven years for Rachel. He walks up to his father in law and says, I've done the seven years. I'm ready for my bride. 29 21. Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. For my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place, like judges, and made a feast, like judges. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her. So see, I'm not going to go with the rest of the story, but here's a feast before the marriage. And as the, the feast is over, getting to the end, then the woman, the daughter, is brought to the man in the tent, and they consecrate the marriage bed. And that's what's going on here in verse 10 of chapter 14. There's the feast. And it came to pass when they saw him, verse 11, that they brought 30 companions to be with him. So 30 more men. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. Why? Well, what, what's the whole idea? He teases, he taunts, he plays. If you can certainly declare it, me, within seven days of the feast, how's that for a marriage feast? Seven days. And find it out. You, you get the answer. Then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. That's not bad. But if you cannot declare it, me, then shall ye give me I, yeah, give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. So you guys give me one one of two items each. If I lose, I got to come up with all of it. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. They couldn't say no. And he said unto them, out of the eater, the first and last time that word shows up, came forth meat. M-E-A-T. Meat is not always pork, chicken, or beef. Meat can also be, in the Bible, honey. Get that straight. Because that's a problem with some people in the Bible. Oh, it says meat, and it's not pork or beef. It doesn't have to be. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound. That's the first and last time that word shows up. The riddle. Three days have come. What is he talking about? They couldn't type it up on the internet. They're like, what? Out of the ear came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. Phew. That's... And it came to pass on the seventh day, seven days, the last day of the feast. And they sent unto Samson's wife, Now get a warning on this right now, because this is going to be a trouble and problem for Samson later. With Delilah. Satan is playing out Samson to see what he does. Entice thy husband. 
that he may declare unto us the riddle. At least we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Nice Philistines. <laughs> We're going to give you capital punishment of fire if you don't tell us the, the, the joke, the punchline. Have ye called us to take that? We have 30 pieces of garments, 30 pieces of sheets. Is it not so? Oh, they're really taking this thing really hard, this, this riddle. They can't get it. And Samson's wife wept before him. We'll see this again. And thou dost make and said, thou dost but hate me. And love is me not. Those words will be said again. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, Philistines. They're not Jewish. And has not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother. He's bragging. I didn't tell my own parents that I broke the law of my God. And shall I tell it to thee? And she wept before him the seven days. Now I'm only going to say because it says the seventh day, verse 15, that verse 16 and 17, this began on the first day of the feast. That they came to her and for seven days of the feast, while their feast lasted, it came to pass on the seventh day, the last day that he told her because she lay sore upon him as Delilah will and she told the riddle to the children of her people and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down hey, before 6 p.m. they waited to the last moment go get him what is sweeter than honey the meat is the honey and what is stronger than a lion they got the riddle and he said unto them if you had not plowed my heifer ooh, what a way to talk to your woman what a way to describe his wife you have not found out my riddle how bad is that in the spirit of the lord The Holy Spirit, capital S. He comes across a lion. The Spirit of the Lord mightily comes upon him. Chapter 13, 25, the Spirit of the Lord began to move him. He has defiled himself with a dead lion. He's eaten from a dead lion to honey. He has defiled his mother and father and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he's going to commit suicide. Hebrews 11. Isn't it great that God is so forgiving? Because the Catholic Church teaches that a man that commits suicide, and I, I also heard this of the Jewish people, but I can't prove all of the Jewish people. I know with the Catholic, if you commit suicide, you go to hell. Let's read Hebrews eleven thirty two. And when shall what and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Abara. And up there he is. And thirty three, which could also be Daniel too, stop the mouth of lions. There's Samson in the great faith chapter with people that you're going to find in heaven one day. A short list of them. He violated the law. And he shows up in Hebrews 11 and God is using it. And there are people out there and there are pastors out there. Oh, if you commit this wicked vile sin, you can never be used from God. What are you doing with Samson? And we're going to read a couple more chapters about Samson. Uh, let's see, 15. And does he make quite 16? 
16 and closes at the death of chapter 16. We have read 13, 14, 15, 16 chapters. Again, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17 about Samson. And he shows up in the great faith chapter. And he violates the law. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he went down to Asklin. That's a place in Philistine. He goes to the Philistines and slew 30 men of them, the Philistines. And took their spoil and gave change it's a word, it's a of change of garments unto them, which expounded the first time that word shows up in the book the riddle. So here's the Philistines. I got this riddle for you. The 30 sheets, 30 garments. If you can do it, they, they got his wife to get the answer and all that. And he goes down to the Philistine camp. Philistine city kills 30 Philistines and brings Philistine sheets and garments to the Philistines and says here's your deal and this is how God uses him to start plaguing the Philistines and it's only just begun and his anger was kindled, he went up to his father's house. He goes back to Dan. He's angry. He is. Whoa. And evidently, but Samson's wife was given to his companion. Evidently, he left his wife behind. And we don't even see if they came together. But the Bible says his wife. They were engaged like Joseph and Mary and still called a marriage. Did you get that? And it does not look like he came in unto her. Like Joseph did not come unto Mary to her after Jesus was born. And you know, when man comes to a woman, they get children. Another false teaching by the Catholic Church that Mary was forever a virgin. And he, he leaves his wife... And the wife is given to his companion. That was in verse number. Where is that companion? Verse. Eleven. Ten or eleven. That's thirty companion. But verse ten I think is where that guy shows up. And then thirty other men show up. But here is Samson's friend. Who is a Philistine evidently. And he stays in Philistine area. And he gets Samson's wife. God's going to use this against the Philistines whom he had used <laughs> look at that as a friend <laughs> they weren't true friendship Samson used him as a friend and he's in the great faith chapter isn't it great that the Bible says all have sinned come short of the glory of God that the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all sins and if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins isn't that great God is so wonderful, so merciful, so graceful. 